How Steven Spielberg impacted cinema and continues to do so. Filmmaker Steven Spielberg has gained mainstream recognition as the godfather of blockbusters, epics, period pieces, and biopics. I can't accomplish a goddamn thing of any human meaning or worth until we cure ourselves of slavery and end this pestilential war that have been enjoyed for generations. He also influenced other film directors and show creators. Over the years, there have been a lot of filmmakers that have been game changers when it comes to filmmaking. Michael Bay has been receiving audiences by presenting them with movies such as the Transformers and the Bad Boys series. Denis Villeneuve has been recently wowing his audiences with sci-fi epics like Blade Runner 2049 and the 2021 adaptation of Dune. Steven Spielberg has been well known for being a movie maker who had influenced filmmakers that rose to fame after him. Just like the director Ridley Scott, Spielberg is an adaptable screenwriter but experimenting in almost any genre and he continues to successfully do so. The 1970s. Before Spielberg directed films, his first big job was when he worked as a director for one of the segments of Night Gallery, a show that is a made-for-TV anthology and supernatural horror film. It is written and hosted by Rod Serling. It took Spielberg a couple of years to make his first feature, which eventually became Duel. In 1974, he then made The Sugarland Express, starring Goldie Hawn. Steven Spielberg received mainstream recognition for the 1975 film Jaws. The first blockbuster that influenced other filmmakers to make and release summer flicks whose purposes are to entertain their audiences. It was the infamous shark movie that scared audiences and made some of them afraid to swim in the ocean. Three years later, Close Encounters of the Third Kind, his first science fiction film which focuses on a blue collar worker in Indiana, whose life alters after he sees an unidentified flying object from outer space. He received his first Oscar nomination for Best Director. 1941 is Steven Spielberg's first war epic, a film that focuses on Los Angeles being in panic after the attack on Pearl Harbor in December of 1941 as they prepare for a Japanese invasion. The 1980s. The director worked with George Lucas for the first time by creating the first of the Indiana Jones entry, Raiders of the Lost Ark, an action-adventure movie with an archaeologist played by Harrison Ford who makes his way to finding an item called the Ark of the Covenant while facing a group of Nazis who are after him. Indiana Jones proved to be a great film that entertained audiences and gave them another reason to return to the theater in the summer once again. Steven Spielberg returned to the sci-fi genre by directing E.T. The Extraterrestrial. The film touched many audiences' hearts as they experienced a tale of a boy that encounters a friendly alien who is hoping to go back to his home planet after landing in the San Fernando Valley. The film was praised due to its special effects and John Williams' memorable film score. Spielberg also made his first sequel, Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. You know how to fly, don't you? No. Do you? In the second part of Indiana's story, he is set on a mission to find a stone and rescue the villagers' children from a dangerous cult that practices child slavery and the dark arts, which involves human sacrifice. The film was a darker entry of the series since it did feature some strong graphic violence. There was a heart-ripping sequence that gave the Motion Picture Associates of America the reason to create the PG-13 rating. However, the MPAA believed that the second film wasn't violent enough to receive an R rating. The film received a PG rating nonetheless. In in 1985, he made the adaptation of Alice Walker's The Color Purple. Audiences were moved when they witnessed Whoopi Goldberg's performance as Celie, a young African-American girl who experiences domestic violence, racism, incest, and other serious issues along with other African-American women during the early 20th century. The film received 11 Oscar nominations, including Best Picture, and was considered one of the best films of the year. Steven Spielberg then made his first serious World War II epic, Empire of the Sun. The film gave mainstream recognition of the British actor Christian Bale. B-51, Cadillac of the sky! 
as he played a boy who went from living with a wealthy British family in Shanghai to becoming a war prisoner in a Japanese camp during the Second World War. His performance was praised by many critics, despite the fact that the film did not do so well in America's box office, though it was successful internationally as the film grossed $66.7 million. The director ended the decade by making the light-hearted romantic drama fantasy Always. It tells the tale of a recently departed pilot spirit that counsels a new pilot while witnessing him falling in love with the lover that he left behind. The film also featured Audrey Hepburn's last performance. Well, yes and no down there. They think it's six months. Time's funny stuff, Pete. A lot funnier than Einstein ever figured out. In the same year, he returned to the third entry of Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. Harrison Ford returns as Indiana Jones as this time, the story deals with Indiana looking for his father, played by Sean Connery. I didn't know you could fly a plane! Why, yes! Land, go! You call this archaeology? Who has been held captive by the Nazis during his quest to find the Holy Grail. The film was a box office success and was praised by critics. The 1990s. In 1991, he released Hook I hate, I hate, I hate Peter Pan with Dustin Hoffman playing Captain Hook and Robin Williams playing an older version of Peter Pan. The story was intended to be a sequel of the original Peter Pan from the novel Peter and Wendy, written by J.M. Barry. The film may have received mixed reviews, but it has become a cult classic towards the children who grew up loving the film for its creative take on an adult Peter Pan who had forgotten about his childhood and become a lawyer. In 1993, Spielberg released his most personal film to date, Schindler's List. It is a biopic that concentrates on an industrialist named Oscar Schindler. I'd make sure it's known the company's in business. I see that it had a certain panache. That's what I'm good at. Not to work, not to work. The presentation who saves and shelters 1,100 Jews from the horrors of the Holocaust. The film received several Oscar nominations, including for Best Picture and Best Director, which Spielberg both won. He never received any financial profit from the movie since it dealt with a dark period of world history. However, in that same year, he made one of the biggest blockbusters from the 1990s, Jurassic Park. The movie was a favorite amongst crowds for having a story containing a dinosaur theme park that became unattainable for the visiting crowds. It was a successful adventure horror film that had state-of-the-art electronic dinosaurs made by Stan Winston. The movie was also praised for the proper use of CGI. In 1997, he released a sequel, The Lost World Jurassic Park. Steven Spielberg reunited once again with Jeff Goldblum as he reprised his role from the first movie. But then later there's running and then screaming. The plot featured another go-around with some scientists trying to study the dinosaurs while a team of hunters planned to capture them for an upcoming theme park. The film received mixed reviews, but was praised for the special effects and the new dinosaurs that were featured. Spielberg released Amistad. The story is based on the happenings in 1839 in the Spanish slave ship in which the Mende tribesmen were kidnapped to become slaves. However, the slaves had achieved to gain power over their abductor's ship. Eventually, the US Supreme Court must make their decision whether the Mende tribesmen will be continued to be slaves or will have their freedom. The movie received four Oscar nominations. The following year, Spielberg returned to make another World War II film, which was Saving Private Ryan. The film featured Tom Hanks. I just know that every man I kill, the farther away from home I feel who played as a soldier who leads his group to retrieve another fellow soldier whose brothers have been killed during combat. The movie was very well known for showing the depiction of its brutal and realistic scenes of unrelenting war violence. It is very famous for having a strong opening of the soldiers being massacred in the Omaha beach. Spielberg won his third Oscar for Best Director. 2000s. Around 2001, he released a personal project called AI, Artificial Intelligence, a personal project that was intended for Stanley Kubrick to direct. The film might have been a different style for cinema's beloved director, since the story focuses on a robotic boy who wishes to become human, so that he can receive the love of the human mother who adopted him. However, it was praised for Spielberg's decision of filling in Stanley Kubrick's shoes, and to pay tribute towards his directing techniques. The following year, he did Catch Me If You Can, a biographical crime comedy drama that dealt with a young skilled con artist, Leonardo DiCaprio. Drop it! Relax! You're late, all right? My name's Alan, Barry Allen, United States Secret Service. Your boy just tried to jump out the window. My partner hasn't been in custody. I don't know what scares. you're talking about. Who is being chased by an FBI agent 
Tom Hanks. Spielberg wanted to do a film that sympathized with the con artist who was on the run due to his sad past. The film received two Oscar nominations for John Williams' score and Christopher Walken's performance as the con artist's disgraced father. The following year, he made Minority Report, the sci-fi action film with Tom Cruise as a police officer who works with a special unit who are capable of arresting assassins before they have a chance to kill someone. However, he himself has been accused of a future murder. You're in a lot of trouble, John. I have a warrant in my pocket that says murder. Don't run. You don't have to chase me. The movie received a television series in 2015. Nonetheless, it received one season. Two years later, he worked with Tom Hanks yet again in The Terminal. Hanks plays a man who gets stuck in New York's John F. Kennedy Airport Terminal, where he is not allowed to enter the US and is not able to return to his country due to a military coup. Along the way, he befriends the people that work in the airport and has a romantic encounter. In 2005, he released two films, the sci-fi action film and H.G. Wells adaptation of War of the Worlds. Spielberg works with Tom Cruise for the second time. It was a critical success for both critics and the box office. The director also returned to the biopic genre by making Munich. It told the tale of five men who were picked to kill the people that are responsible for the massacre that happened towards the Israeli athletes at the 1972 Olympics. The film received five Oscar nominations including Best Picture and Director. Three years later, he returned to the fourth installment of Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. The film became a success and was one of the most profitable action films along with Iron Man and The Dark Knight, 2010s. In 2011, he released a 3D animated film, The Adventures of Tintin, an adaptation of the French artist Hergé's comic strip. Peter Jackson served as the producer. The story's script was written by the auteur filmmaker Edgar Wright and co-writer Stephen Moffat and Joe Cornish. I believe I have captured something of your likeness. Oh. Not bad. What do you think, Snowy? In the same year, he released the war epic War Horse. The story was wowed and moved by the audiences for showing the tale of a young man who enlists himself in the First World War to go after his dearest horse after it was sold to some enlisted men. The horse ends up being used for the war battles but escapes. The film received six Academy Awards, including Best Picture that year. The following year, Spielberg returned to make another Oscar favorite, Lincoln. It was his first collaboration with Daniel Day-Lewis. The actor won his third Academy Award for Best Actor for portraying the 16th president who decides to abolish slavery for the African Americans. Three years later, he reunited with Tom Hanks for Bridge of Spies. Hanks played Hames B. Donovan, an American lawyer who was enlisted to defend an arrested Soviet spy in court during the Cold War. But what you're saying is, if Powers has given up everything he knows, then Moscow would trade? He was also recruited by the CIA to discuss a prisoner exchange in East Berlin two years later. The film was written by the Coen brothers, along with Matt Charman. Mark Rylance won the Oscar for Best Supporting Actor. In 2016, he reunited with Mark Rylance and gave him the lead role for the BFG, an adaptation of Roald Dahl's cherished children's book. It tells the story of a giant who befriends a young orphan girl, so he takes her back to his giant country to stop other giants from eating human beings. He worked with Tom Hanks yet again for the historical political thriller the Post, in 2017. The following year, he returned to do another blockbuster by making Ready Player One. The story tells a futuristic tale of an orphaned boy who discovers clues to a contest and wins control of a virtual reality program that is consumed by humanity to escape the real world. It pays homage and features easter eggs of sci-fi classics and horror films. 2020s the beloved director returned to the directing chair by making his first remake since War of the Worlds, West Side Story. The adaptation of the 1957 musical, the film received praise as well as attention for the Academy Awards yet again. Ariana DeBose won her first Oscar for her portrayal of Anita. She became the first Afro-Latina and queer woman of color to win the coveted award. The film might have been a disappointment to the box office since it made $76 million against a production budget of $100 million. The film received recognition due to to the direction, acting, and cinematography. In conclusion, Steven Spielberg is a multi-talented director who has made history for cinema and continues to do so for his love of other genres and having the passion to deliver the best period pieces and biopics. Spielberg will never be forgotten as the filmmaker who entertains and enlightens his audiences with masterful storytelling.